name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My adorable Jesus, may our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. My adorable Jesus, may our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. My God, I love you. My God, I love you. Amen. He says to tell you that he says, I love you too. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Friends, would you be seated now? I'm so glad to see that you brought your sacramentals. It was on my mind all morning for some reason that we need to maybe make an announcement. In fact, you still have time. So perhaps if you'd like to at lunchtime, if you want to go right nearby, and get some more water and or salt and or olive oil, feel free to do that at lunchtime. And then maybe at the beginning of the healing service, we could do not just a blessing, but we'll do the traditional exorcism blessing over the water and the salt and the oil. And you may have heard this already, but I think we've had now, I'm trying to count, uh, nine individuals healed of COVID-19 in the ICU within hours of dying, in the ICU dying, we've had nine people healed almost instantaneously of COVID-19 when we snuck in the exercise holy water. And two were Jews, two were Jews, amen? amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can give God a round of applause if you want to, not me, but God. So isn't this a, a beautiful church? And what's the official title of the church? Is it Mary, our queen? Isn't that beautiful? I mean, it, you hear about Mary, queen of the universe, right? It, but that's so personalized. Mary, our queen, it's so personal. I bet mama loves it too. She probably inspired it. So what an honor for you and I. You see, because the fathers of the church taught rather categorically, that in the final days, devotion to the Holy, Holy Mother of God would be the one sure sign of orthodoxy. Almost to a man, the fathers of the church taught this, that in the final days, in God's one true church, the Holy Catholic Church, and by the way, the whole world will be Catholic soon, the whole world will be Catholic, but in God's one true church, the sign of orthodoxy is devotion, you might say, pure love for the Virgin Mary. And so, pursuant to that, I want to say to you, loving Mary is not a nicety, it's a necessity. It's not a nicety, it's a necessity. Amen? Amen. And I would say after that, Every Baptist, every Methodist, every Presbyterian, every Pentecostal, they also need Mary to be their mother. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So Mary, uh, she's not really in addition to the church, she's at the heart of the church, is Mary. 
In a certain sense, Mary is the church. In a certain sense, she is the church. And we live in Mary's heart as if in a church. Amen? So there's the most beautiful church God ever made. And the one advantage of this church is that this church had as its architect and designer God himself. So the church behind us is quite beautiful. The church here was designed by man, probably led by the Holy Spirit, we hope so. But this is a church designed completely and created by God. Now, if you were to make your own mother before you became flesh, what kind of mother would you make for yourself? Hmm, ever thought about that? If you made your mom in advance, then you popped into her womb and were born through her? What kind of mother would you make? Hmm. Now imagine that the you who are making your mother, that, that you is divine. What if a divine you decides to make his own mother? What kind of mother does he make? If someone who's God makes his own mother, what kind of mother did he make? Do you get my drift? I hope so, because I'm getting the Holy Spirit goosebumps all over me right now. And so, beloved, I want to say to you that mankind and even, even the church in many places has no idea of the greatness of our Lady. No idea of how great she really is. Amen? Hallelujah? So, would you try this little spiritual exercise after me? Would you say this? Say, we love you, Mary. Love you, Mary. You're, beautiful. You're beautiful. You are the mother of God the Most High. You are my mother, too. Be my mother. I give my heart to you. Put my heart into your heart. Where I can be sanctified. I want to be holy. Make me like you. A joy to the Most High. You are beautiful, O oh Mary. And we love you. And we want to love you with God's own love. Are you ready to be really childlike? Do we have any, um, you know, stuffy Catholics here or just humble Catholics today? <laughs> are we just, we need any stuffy ones or we just have humble ones today? Can we be childlike right now? Yes. I mean, that, that's what the boss said, didn't he? He says you cannot enter heaven unless you become like a little child. Did he say that or didn't he? Yes. That's true for all of us. Amen? Yes. So I'd like to ask you with me to blow our mother a kiss of love. Would you give her a kiss and blow it to her? Woo! You just covered her with lipstick. One more time. Give her all of your love and your family's love. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You just made Jesus smile. You know how it is when you see someone loving someone you love? It's the greatest thrill in the world, isn't it? When I was a newly ordained priest, I went down to Florida where I was born, and I was doing some masses of thanksgiving there. And I went to, I came back to do some healing masses after that, maybe a year later. But there was a certain phenomenon that I noticed in those first masses as a young priest. I'm still a young priest, by the way. <laughs> Don't get any ideas. So there was a certain phenomenon that I noticed. I would bring my mom with me. You know, I was kind of like Jesus, you know what I mean? I had mom with me. I loved my mom. And guess what my mother's name was? Maria. Maria. I would bring mama with me. You know, she's my Italian mama. And at some point during the mass, the homily, or during the talk, I would say to everyone, and I say, my, my mom is here with us today. 
and the whole group would go, oh. <gasps> and I would embarrass my mom to death and say, Mom, would you stand up, please? She's so humble, you know, so humble. She would blush like a thousand shades of red, and she would stand up, and people would applaud. And when I was finished with the mass or the talk, the whole group would leave me behind and rush around my mother. <laughs> they would hug her and kiss her and love on her, and I'm here all by myself. <laughs> and I'm watching it, and I am eating it up. I'm so filled with joy. I just, I can't get over it. It's such an almost ecstasy to see this beautiful, humble woman receiving all that love. It, it was the best thing in my life next to the Eucharist. Amen? Amen? Can you imagine how our Savior, true God, true man, King of the universe, Savior of the world, how he feels, I'm an imperfect man, he was the perfect man. I have imperfect love, he has perfect love. Imagine how Jesus felt and feels today when we gather around his mama and hug her and kiss her and love her. You get my drift? I mean, if it fills me with joy in all my broken humanity, how about the perfect one? Amen? So never think that you're hurting Jesus by honoring Mary. It's quite the opposite. You are delighting Jesus to no end when you honor his mother. Amen? Alleluia. Well, beloved, I sometimes like to start with like a true story. And I had something happen yesterday that I shared with my own community near Covington, Georgia, last night. We've been through quite a trial the last week or two. And that is I have a little sister who lives here in Georgia too. She lives in Conyers, Georgia. She lives in a, a really nice apartment complex. Not rich, you know, but very nice, clean, well-kept, well-managed. And my little sister had a terrible experience a week and a half ago at the apartment complex where a gentleman who lives there assaulted my sister on the property. And it was really nightmarish. And if it wasn't for the grace of Almighty God, my sister could have been raped and murdered. So he tried to do a few things, but my sister, skinny little thing, was able to fight him off by some miraculous grace. And lo and behold, interesting enough, and this is good for you to hear because the water is in front of me now, is that I, I have been blessing my sister's apartment with exercise holy order every visit. So I've done that, like, I think five times in the last few weeks. And so the visit I had with my sister, just two days before this happened, before I left, I took the exercise holy water and blessed her apartment. And when I finished blessing the whole apartment, I was just drawn to her front door. And I didn't know what that was. It wasn't overwhelming, but it was distinctive. We need to train our ears to listen to the Holy Spirit. We're going to pray for you to receive a double portion of the Holy Spirit today. Amen? Amen. Especially when we have the imparting of the flame of love. The flame of love is filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm getting the Holy Spirit goosebumps right now. So we're going to have that special devotion in the afternoon. Only just a few minutes to you might receive the flame of love. If you have it already, we're going to double it inside of us. But that flame of love is a modern-day apostolic gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Because we need revival. Amen? We need to learn to listen to that flame within us, the Holy Spirit. God is real. He's alive. He's absolutely real. Atheists are dead. Catholics are alive. Amen? God is utterly real. He's so real that well, I'm like zero next to God. I'm like nothing. He's so real. 
Amen? He's what the philosophers call the really real. That's actually a phrase in philosophy. God is the really real. And so I heard and felt the really real in my sister's apartment. That's the advantage of being Catholic. You have Jesus Christ living within you through the Eucharist, through the sacraments, through Mary's rosary, and through the flame of love. He gets bigger and stronger. It's the advantage of being Catholic. You have the living God living inside of you. And he was prompting me to bless my sister's front door a second time and a third time. And I didn't know why. So I thought, well, you know, just to keep her safe, she lives by herself. So I blessed it a second time and a third time in the area in front of the door. That's where the man barged into my sister's apartment two days later, slammed the door behind him, and attacked my sister. Right there. So we always listen to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Amen? You see how practical God is? It's not always highfalutin and theoretical. And, you know, I love to read. I love to read Thomas Aquinas. I love St. Augustine. I love Pope Benedict and his writings. But listen, we need to get real. Amen? Those writings are important as long as we know how to filter them so as to live them. Amen? So, you know what I think? Tell me what you think. I think God saved my little sister's life through the exercise holy water. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't that amazing? And that's available to all of us. That's not just for priests. This gift of hearing the voice of the living God is for every Catholic. Amen. And that's why the church is dying right now. Even priests don't even hear the voice of God. Give me a break. Give me a break. What did St. Paul say in the infallible word of God? He says, this is the mystery of our faith, Christ dwelling within. That's the Catholic Bible. Is it true or isn't it? Is it true? Is it true? Is it real? This, he said, is the essence of the Christian mystery, Christ dwelling within. Amen. And it's kind of fun. It's fun. Amen? Amen? And if you haven't already guessed, it is the sure recipe to heal loneliness. That's what heals our loneliness definitively. Amen? Amen. We need Christ dwelling within. Amen? So friends, would you say this after me? Just to put this truth, this doctrine, this dogma, and this word of God on your lips and in your heart. Would you say this after me? Say this. This is the essence of our faith. Christ dwelling within. Whew, that's powerful, isn't it? Let's say it one more time. This is the essence of our faith. Christ dwelling within. Amen. Hallelujah. And you see how God, through his son, the greatest teacher who ever lived, was trying to teach us, right, through the Mass. He's trying to teach us. It's all real. I've, had the, I've seen the host bleed twice. And just a couple of days ago, I've had two miracles. I didn't tell anybody. I don't like to say all of them out loud. But you know, at my mass two nights ago, an angel appeared on the host. I mean, well formed and designed on the host as I held him up after consecration. An angel. I mean, a beautiful, grandiose angel. It's all real. And we take Christ within, but see, he's trying to reinforce in you and I that, that teaching truth. I, Jesus Christ, true God, true man, live inside of you. 
He's trying to teach us something at every Mass. Amen? That's what he's trying to do. He does dwell within. And Eucharist is meant to make that fire get stronger. Anybody here ever was a Boy Scout or a Girl Scout? Would you raise your holy hand if you were a Boy Scout or a Girl Scout? Those were the days, weren't they? Wasn't that fun? I used to love campouts and hiking the best. Well, you know, I'll tell you one true story before I forget. When I was on a, one camp out, we and my Boy Scout troop, that particular camp out, we set a record. We caught three snakes that weekend. <laughs> you know, if you're, you're a teenage boy, that's fun. You know what I mean? We caught three snakes that weekend. And we caught them the same way all three times. You know how we caught all three? We were taking hikes three different times. Myself with my troop. Bunch of, bunch of kids, like 12 to 16 years of age. And suddenly, along the hike, this happened three times, everyone stopped, so I stopped with them. Everyone turned and looked at me with faces pale white. All the boys pointed their finger at my feet. And all the boys screamed, Jim, you're standing on a snake! We caught three snakes, all three, because I happened to stand on them. <laughs> I still stand on snakes today. Yeah. Amen. Three snakes. God let me catch them for the truth. Who tramples the snake? Our Lady. And whose son am I? I belong to a community, you know, I'm a religious priest. I belong to the Society of Our Lady of the Most Holy Trinity. That's the community that I belong to. Hallelujah. So campouts can be very meaningful. The Lord knew I was going to be an exorcist one day, but I didn't know it. He knew it. Amen? So he's giving me a little practice while I was young, you see? <laughs> and you know, when you're on a camp out, right, you have the fire. That, that's like one of the funnest things about a camp out is building your fire and learning to cook your meals and your marshmallows on it. And you know, you have to sort of keep it going, right? Especially if you have it going during the night, especially if it's cool at night, you keep it going. So what do you do? Every hour or so, you add more logs, right? You have to add something to the fire, or else it goes out. That is Holy Communion. You have to add something to the fire, or it will go out. Amen? That's what your Mass is. It's adding another sacred log, the body of Christ himself, to your fire to keep it alive day by day. Amen? Hallelujah. So brothers and sisters, the ancient fathers of the church taught us that Mary would be the sure sign of orthodoxy in the final days. These are those times. And we don't mean to say by that that the end of the world is coming tomorrow. But what we mean to say is actually even one of the popes said this recently that we're living not, he says, so much in an era of change, but the change of an era. So the Lord told the new saint, Luisa Picaretta, the servant of God, and he said this through many other mystics and saints as well, that he moves every 2,000 years. That's a common understanding of the church. So how long has the church been around? About 2,000 years, right? About 2,000 years. And the Lord moved about every 2,000 years. He makes a dramatic change, like when the flood came after 2,000 years, then the Jewish covenant, 2,000 years, and now the Christian covenant. The Christian covenant is eternal, but God's about to upgrade it to Catholicism 2.0. It's about to get a lot more powerful.
Amen. Same seven sacraments, same mother, same Jesus. But something dramatically powerful is about to happen on the face of the earth. All the saints have prophesied it. Even John Paul prophesied it. And it's all going to happen through Mary's intercession. It all begins with the flame of love. Amen? Amen. That's why the second important prayer of our flame of love devotion approved by the church uh, is you know, Cardinal Erdo in Hungary. He just sent me a message yesterday. That's the cardinal who gave the imprimatur to this devotion. He's a very good bishop, Archbishop of Budapest, Hungary. It's fully and completely approved. In fact, did you know this? That when a Catholic speaks against an approved revelation, like the Book of Heaven by Luisa Picaretta, like the Flame of Love, when a Catholic speaks against it, that's actually a sin. That's actually a sin speak against a fully approved devotion. Isn't that interesting? Of course, it really makes sense when you think about it. So this is a fully approved devotion. We said the primary prayer, the Eugy prayer together. The second prayer is the one line prayer to the Virgin herself. O oh, blessed lady, spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity. That's the second prayer. Would you say this after me? We're going to say it three times in a row, that the flame will begin to descend on each of our heart, but also on all of the world. Would you say this after me? O oh, blessed lady, oh, blessed spread the effect of grace, the effect of, grace of, thy of thy flame of love over all of humanity. <laughs> now a second time with more faith. O oh, blessed lady, Spread the effect of grace, the effect of, grace. Of, thy of thy flame of love over all of humanity. Over all of humanity. Now a third time with greater love. O oh, blessed, oh, blessed Lady, spread the effect of grace, spread the effect of, grace. of thy flame of love, of flame of love. Over, all of over all of humanity. Amen. Now, Our Lady mentioned to the mystic, Elizabeth Kindleman. Isn't it interesting her name is Kindleman? Is that a coincidence? She, she, right? She, she was sent, right, to kindle the flame in man. Kindleman. Isn't that amazing? God, that's, that's called a God wing, amen? You've got a few in your life too, amen? We all have little God winks in our, in our lives. Amen? Isn't that what the pastor of this church said at Mass, Father Bird? How it's a question of listening to God and then saying yes to what he says. So Elizabeth Kindleman was given the grace to kindle within man the flame of God's love. Hallelujah. So this flame we want to settle on each one of us and on the whole world. And here's what's so beautiful about God and Mary. You must know this already. You know, God doesn't need one billion soldiers. God, our God, the only God, the true God, the all-powerful, the all-beautiful, the all-wise, the all-holy, our best friend who lives within, God could save this entire country, all 50 states and its territory through this group here alone. You could save this country. Amen? Amen? And so we want to pray for that today. That perhaps with this, in this beautiful parish, Mary our Queen, that you could, with Father Bird's blessing, and I know he's behind us, have a prayer group and meet together praying the rosary with the Flame of Love prayers I want to tell you, beloved, we're not going to lose. We're going to win because God always wins. Amen? We're not going to lose. And we're not going to give this country to Joe Biden or to the communist, to the abortionist, to the transgenderist. All that is nonsense. It's all sinful. It's evil. It's anti-God. It's anti-Christ. 
and it will not stand. Amen.